Hi, this is Azza Chamberlain and you're watching True School Sports. Woo. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, in this particular video here, I wanted to talk about something that I find very interesting, and I think it, it, it'll, help, it'll help bring understanding and clarity to people who don't have the time or just don't understand the infrastructure of Japanese boxing because the infrastructure of Japanese boxing is different than the infrastructure of boxing here in the States. And in, th in this particular video, we're going to explore why the hell these Japanese fighters, are, they, they keep winning titles in five fights, seven fights, nine fights, and why is this happening? And I think it's a valid question to ask um, of the Japanese boxing you know, infrastructure and why these fighters keep snagging up titles so quickly. Um, because from an American perspective, that's unheard of. You know, we don't we don't hear about that in America. You know, because guys don't even challenge for titles until like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 fight. So I'm gonna do my best to explain why that happens and, and what circumstances lead up to that. So in Japan right now, we, we see fighters like Naoya, the monster Inoue, who's one of the best pound pound fighters in boxing. You know, he won his he won a world title like in the seventh fight. You got guys like Kosi Tanaka who won a world title in their fifth fight, and then. People who don't watch or take the time to learn about these guys and, and the infrastructure of Japanese boxing might call into question the, the legitimacy of these titles, which I think is fair. Because if you don't know, you don't know. But the reason Japanese fighters can be fast-tracked to world titles is because of how Japanese boxing is structured. So many of you guys know here in America we have a regional title. We have the NABA title. And, you know, if a lot of fighters wind up winning the NABA title, you'll see it sometimes in their 15th, 16th, 17th professional fight, things like that. And when they win the NABA title, this gives them ranking position in the sanctioning bodies. You know, it's a sought-after sought regional title. So when you win the NABA title, it's, the, it's one of the first steps towards becoming a contender and, and working your way up the ranks to get that title shot. You know what I'm saying? So in Japan, it's, it's the, they have a, a similar structure. But I would say... Their fighters put more of an emphasis on winning the regional titles so they can get in the rankings and get those title shots. So uh, if you look at the careers of, like, we'll use Nayo the Monster Inoue for an example. Uh, he, he, what, what winds up happening in Japan is before, before they fight for, their, for the big regional title there, their version of the NABA title, they fight for the Japanese flyweight title. So uh, Inoue fought for the Japanese title, I believe, and it was in his, what, fifth fight? Let me see, I got it right here. It's fifth fight. I think it was against, I know, I know it was against Taguchi. No, his fourth fight. So he fought uh, world champion, uh, a guy that would become world champion, Ryoshi Taguchi, in his fourth professional fight um, for the Japanese light flyweight title. Okay? Then he won that fight. And then he fought for what they call the OBPF title, and that's the Oriental Boxing Pacific, what is it, OPBF, Oriental Pacific Boxing Federation. So the Oriental Pacific Boxing Federation, he fought for the OBF, OPBF title, which is the Japanese version of the NABA title. So, so he won Japanese title, OPBF title, and then he ultimately got his first world title shot against um, Adrian Hernandez, you know, who was a world champion. Adrian, former world champion Adrian Hernandez, you know, he fought him and he, he became world champion in the seventh fight. And if you look at the progression of these Japanese fighters, that's normally how it goes. You either see them win a Japanese title first, then they win the OPBF title, and then they go into a world title fight, or you can see them win the o OPBF title outright, then they go fight for a world title. So either way, like any, any Japanese fighter who's worth a damn right now in boxing that's been world champion, you're going to see their progression something along those lines where they win one of those titles first and that's why a lot of the Japanese fighters are winning is because their promoters are putting an emphasis on them winning uh, regional titles early in their careers so that they can get ranking position and if they feel there's a guy they can beat in the rankings they fight them and no way they become world champion and the difference between that approach and how America I mean, a lot, how a lot of American prospects go about things is a lot, a lot of times and this is no shade at American boxing prospects. I'm American, I love the states, but I'm just I'm just telling I'm just calling a spade a spade and I and I, and I have a lot of friends in boxing. Um, so I know the mentality, I know how they think, you know. A lot of times American boxing prospects are more focused on the business aspect and sometimes they're so focused on the business aspect that they forget about 
the fact that they're still fighters. It's a, it's a sport. They're still in a contact, dangerous sport, and that that should be the main emphasis um, above being a businessman. Now, obviously, you got to have business acumen, have business sense, because boxing is a sport where um, you know it's it's a sport of free enterprise, where you can maneuver your way how you want to maneuver your way and make a good living for yourself. So, do 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 what you got to do, get it how you live, but. Don't forget that you're in a you're, you're in a contact sport. Don't become so enthralled by the business of boxing that you forget that you're still a fighter. And that's what ends up happening with, with, with a lot of American fighters and even their managers. They they protect them and they they carefully maneuver them for sometimes 40 fights like a Deontay Wilder or sometimes even 20 plus fights like a Gary Russell Jr. And they don't ever fight for those regional titles. So like you'll see sometimes a lot of the American fighters. Even even the ones that become world champions, they, they don't win the regional titles to get the ranking, ranking position. They have what normally happens is sometimes maybe the fighter might have a good relationship, or his manager or promoter might have a good relationship with a certain sanctioning body. So like Bob Aaron fighters normally get good ranking position with the w, WBO. Uh, PBC fighters get good ranking position with, with the WBC. That's just, that's just the nature of the business. That's that's how it works. Um, so the regional title in American boxing has been devalued and demeaned and it's just another trinket so there's not really much value placed on the NABA title unless you're a fighter that's like a high risk low reward type of a fighter so you then you have to win the NABA title so you can maneuver yourself to get ranking position to potentially get a world title shot and that's why you don't you 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 don't really see many I mean you, you know you, you, you get your exceptions like Shakur Stevenson he won a world title in his what 13th fight but by Japanese standards, that's that, that, that's kind of late to win a world title because you got guys like Tanaka winning it in his fifth fight, Inoue winning it in his seventh fight. So the the the, 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 um, the devaluation of regional titles in America and the emphasis, the constant emphasis on being a brand and being a business, um, it delays American fighters from winning those regional titles and getting ranking position early in their career. And sometimes it even hinders them in the ring. Like sometimes, when, sometimes when they actually get to that championship level, they don't know what to do, or they they can't compete with the other guy because the other guy either a has more amateur experience, or b he fought better fighters as a prospect and got better in ring experience, so he winds up just destroying them guys. Like, like examples of that would be Tyson Fury versus Wilder in the rematch, or Vasily Lomachenko versus Gary Russell. Either one of those are good examples of that. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's probably the best way I could explain it. Uh, the reason a lot of these Japanese fighters are winning world titles so early in their careers is because of the, the, the emphasis and the focus they put on winning their top regional title, which is the, o, the OPBF title, okay? And, they, and, 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 and that's normally what you see they win before they get a world title shot. So I hope this video was informative to you guys. I hope this will give you an understanding for why these guys like Inoue and Tanaka are doing such great things in, at such an early part of their careers. And just shout out to Japan. They're doing the thing in boxing right now. And um, if you guys have any questions you want me to answer in a video form like this, you know, we're on quarantine. We, I got time. If there's any videos you want me to see me do, do like this, uh, ask me a question down below in them comments, and I'll, I'll get to it in a future video. And with that said, uh, like, like, like I say in every single video, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.